Rocky, mate, we're back for another week. Nine games of footy to reflect on from the weekend just gone and uh, some pretty big upsets and some big ones coming up this weekend as well. That time of year where we get lots of knee-jerk reactions, a lot of overreactions, and uh, that's been reflected in the premiership market already. The pies have drifted all the way out to eight bucks, so uh, a lot of value there for the punters if they want to jump on, if you can think the the pies are going to turn things around. Sydney into $6.50, but I'm most keen to talk about the big, big sound coming from the west of the ground, the Giants. uh, $5.50 into favouritism with uh, the Neds bookies. Um, Look, Jesse Hogan coming off another monster weekend. Uh, Last Saturday against North, he's leading the Coleman charge now with 10 goals. To me, he's always been that kind of forward that's, he's a good forward, but he's not in that elite tier of guys, mainly due to the injuries that he's had. Um, But look, the bookies think he's a genuine chance in the Coleman this year, uh, into $8 now, only behind Kerno and Nick Larky. Two games in, mate, only a small sample size, but... uh, do you think that uh, this is the year for Hogs to maybe be a serious chance for the Coleman? Yeah, I think it is. I think they're going to win um, a lot of games of footy. He's the main man down there, and he's always had the talent. He's always been a high draft pick. He's obviously had his issues away from footy, also on the field through injuries, etc., like that. So if, he seems to be in a really happy place up there at the moment. Giants are going really well. They probably deserve to be favourite after the first couple of couple of games. We know what they did to Collingwood. It's hard to get a gauge on North Melbourne. Mm. They're, they're, they're going to struggle throughout the season. Um, they, they dominated that game. The issue for Hogan is when Toby Green starts to kick, start impacting the scoreboard, etc., like that, um, and the other guys around that. But the, the both teams in Sydney, we could have a, a Sydney grand final. I mean, the Swans, for me, uh, <laughs> as good as anyone in the competition at the moment, we always thought they were going to get there. Um, they probably had a, a down year last year, played in a grand final before their time. So they've been there before. They'd never really had that drop away. So both Sydney clubs would be really excited where they're mm. at. It feels very real, doesn't it, for both Sydney teams? It's only been two games. It feels like these two sides are going to be there the entire year. Um, for me, I think Hogan, the, the part of his game that isn't spoken about enough is his contested marking yeah. ability. He's a very good contested mark. But you've sort of stolen my notes already about – the amount of talent that's in the Giants forward line. Um, Josh Kelly's there. Toby Green can kick goals. Riccardi. Callum Brown's a, a name we've really got to watch this year as well. Um, so the Giants have the buy this week. Then they come back up to the Gold Coast where they play the Suns in what could be a game between two undefeated sides. So as you've already touched on, uh, a lot to like there about what's happening in uh, for both clubs in Sydney. Um, look, Fremantle. Big, big win against your Brisbane Lions uh, on the, in the final game on Sunday last week. First of all, is it flag mantle time? No, absolutely not. I think they'll, they'll struggle this year. And, um, but they, they were impressive. I mean, Brisbane jumped them in the first 10 minutes. <clears throat> Looked like Brisbane by how far. A bit the same the week before with Brisbane. They were mm. half time by how far against Carlton. And then they stopped. Um, so there's some concerning things there for Brisbane. So let's park that. But what Freeman were able to do, particularly through their midfield, um, uh, they've, they've still got Darcy, obviously, to come back um, at a later date, but Luke Jackson was, was really good throughout that game. Their ground-level players, um, Brayshaw, etc. I oh, know you want to talk about Sarong. He was outstanding. Yeah, yeah. He was absolutely everywhere. He does it defensively. His work rate to get back to help defensively and then bring the footy out is exceptional and, and one of the best in the competition. So I think that they may be better than what I thought they would be. I thought they'd be down the bottom half and, and Longmuir would be in a bit of strife, but um, going off the first game, they were quite impressive. It, it felt like Jackson and Sarong in particular had the ball on a string for most of that game against Brisbane and the Lions didn't have a lot of answers. We'll talk about the Lions at another time, as you said, but it feels like we just don't talk about Caleb Sarong enough. Do you think if he played in Melbourne, he's absolutely getting the credit as a top five midfielder? Oh, maybe not top five, but he'd be certainly talked about a lot more. Um, what he does over there in the West, and even through the struggling times and battling, battling the last couple of years, he always found the footy and worked hard. And they obviously, there's a guy at West Coast that everyone talks about over in Perth, Harley yep. Reid. He's, yep. he's one game in, but Sarong should be on the back paper, back page a little bit more than what he is. I think he he just flies under the radar. His size probably does that to him a little bit. But he's, he's tough, he's hard, he, he's everything you want from an inside midfielder. It complements them, it allows Fife to obviously play in different positions. We've seen him play a bit more through the midfield. But what Sarong does around the footy, um, he, he 
he's really, really classy inside midfielder. I think his toughness is a, a very underrated part of his game because if you look back at the stats from Sunday, uh, Fremantle, 67 tackles to Brisbane's 55. So that's where the game was basically won. Um, Sarong's into $17 now for the Brownlow. So he's ahead of Brayshaw, which I think is a pretty significant storyline because we always think of Brayshaw as a guy that's going to get the votes. But it seems like that's going to change. And uh, a strong midfield for the Dockers is going to prove key with some big injuries down back now. Um, Brandon Cox, Oscar McDonald, and a couple more. So, uh, look, Freeman will have North Melbourne uh, on Saturday, I believe, at, under the roof at Marvel. Um, and look, we saw what uh, GWS were able to do to North last week. So I think Sarong 30-plus disposals is a bet we can both be on board with. Yeah, I think so. Unless they send someone to him to, to shut him down, which Clarko, <laughs> I think, has it in his repertoire to do if he thinks someone's getting off the chain. He likes to send people to, to watch. But the only thing with doing that is then you free up Brace or five of these guys. Yep. So... Um, Oh, yeah, I think you could nearly lock him in for 30 plus. The other award I want to quickly talk about is the Rising Star. It's going to be a fluctuating kind of market. Um, a name that the, the Ned's bookies didn't actually have in the market up until uh, Sunday, basically, was uh, Ollie Dempsey, Geelong's uh, emerging star forward. He's come in at uh, $26 in the Ned's market to win the Rising Star. Probably one of the, the biggest kind of feel-good stories to come out of the weekend. Three goals, 15 touches, seven marks. He's only 22. Um, kicked the first goal of the year for the Cats. Uh, is there a chance that you know this is a sustainable uh, run for him? Is he going to be a serious chance in the rising star do you think well it's funny isn't it that a, a rising star at, at his age like yeah it used to be Third sort of a first, <laughs> first or uh, second year or so um like he was outstanding obviously to be able to impact the scoreboard the way he did in a, a tight affair to be able to get off the chain and kick three um i don't think he'll be able to sustain it week in week out it's generally those guys around the footy that win these awards um they grab attention etc like that but an outstanding what he was able to do on Saturday night, um, whether he can sustain it for the full season, time will tell. Um, they've obviously got a potent forward line as well. Mm. They've got a few few guys missing. So will he be able to continue to do that when everyone comes back into that forward mix? I'm not convinced. It, it was an encouraging sign, though, I think, for Cats fans because they do need a, a, an emerging yeah. forward with that the age of their list. And uh, I think it was good to see him take the game on. <clears throat> he looked very confident, made some really good decisions with the ball, getting it inside 50. Um, I don't know about the Cats, though, on the, the back of that game. I know, I've know i heard a lot of people say that Geelong were good and they're going to improve, but to me, St Kilda lost that game. I thought St Kilda was the better side <clears throat> on the night. Do you agree with me there? Yeah, I think so. Like, what Geelong used to be able to do at that venue, they used to blow teams away. And if St Kilda probably should have won that game, I know Dangerfield stood up late, kicks that long goal. But Is he the guy you want kicking a long goal? Yeah, well, I think so. <laughs> like, he, he backs himself in. He's got the confidence to go back and, and do it. Um, he's probably better from there than 15, 20 metres out. You'd be True. a bit, bit yep. more nervous, I think, if he was a bit closer to goal. He, he generally nails those long footies, so... I mean, if the footy's not in Cameron's hands, you'd probably take Dangerfield from there. No, I do agree with that. Um, Cats have a, a big one on Friday night down in Adelaide against the Crows, who need to lift after three quarters of embarrassment against the Gold Coast Suns. The last important question I want to ask you, though, have you ever thrown away a bloke's shoe like Brian Myers did? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have back in the day, or just like thrown it over the sideline. There's... I don't have any issue with it. If the guy drops it like right in his sort of standing space mm. where he's going to be, I've got no issue. If he had thrown it probably the other way over the boundary line, would have been a smarter option because just into the six row. Well, reckon? yeah, the footy the footy can transition into the corridor, so the, the player can go and pick it up. If you put it over the fence or near the boundary line, then yep. he's out of play. So you've got a seventeen v eighteen advantage on the ground. Yeah, it was definitely a hazard. I was on Myers' side. <laughs> Speaking of hazards, our multi last Ooh. week, uh, I got us off to an absolute stinker. Shea Bolton, two plus goals. Goals, no good. You came good though with uh, Gould and 25 plus disposals. GWS the cover. Talk us through that, mate. Well, that was home the whole way through almost. Like they, North Melbourne were only in the game because they were kicking so straight. And had the Giants kicked a little bit straight, we'd probably win that. But what, there was a, about two minutes to go and North, we're home. We covered the line at 45 points. Yeah. North Melbourne kick a goal and get it to 39 and then shut up shop the Giants and we missed by four point five points. Yeah, sneaky backdoor cover there. It would have helped if Hogan had a chance to kick his seventh. But anyway, alas, we did get Melbourne home head-to-head -head, uh, on uh, Saturday afternoon. 
Uh, oh, sorry, Sunday mo- Sunday afternoon, Sunday I should afternoon, say. Yeah. So we went two from four last week. Um, we're going to reduce it a little bit this week and just have three legs. We've got a nice little $6 multi. Um, Tommy, who have you got in Hawthorne versus Melbourne? Well, Hawthorne versus Melbourne, I think Sisley's week will stand. We're obviously recording Tuesday morning. Tribunal will be later tonight. But um, I would imagine that Sisley doesn't get up. You can't get off a kicking charge, even though it was... There wasn't a great deal in it. You can't be seen to be kicking. Yep. Given his record, so yeah. he's going to pay the price. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So I think Ben Brown to kick two plus in that game. I don't think they'll have the defence to be able to stop him. Um, I think Ben Brown is almost almost a lock for, for two goals at $2. I think is good value. Yeah, very good price. Uh, I'm backing against my Hawks. I'm going to take Melbourne to cover. I, I thought Hawthorne did some nice things last week, but uh, they were smashed around the stoppages. And Essendon just matched them goal for goal. And I can't, they seem to just run out of legs when it gets to the fourth quarter. We saw that in the preseason, translated into round one. So I think the Ds are going to prove too good there at the MCG. We're going to wrap it up uh, with the Sydney Swans 1-39 to against the Bombers. Um, again, I thought Essendon did a lot right. There's been a lot of talk about Archie Perkins. Guelphy was outstanding last week. Um, but the Swans at home, they're flying right now. And I, I just can't see them losing that game. You don't think they'll win by more? That's the danger. Um, I have a feeling these two sides played quite close last year, so that's okay. my thinking there. Yep. Um, I'm happy to go 1-39 to 39 rather than the line. But right. uh, to, re- to recap, we've got Ben Brown, two-plus goals. Melbourne to cover against Hawthorne in the same game. Sydney, 1-39, to 39, $6.04. You like it? Yeah, that's juicy. And we're alive on Saturday, which is the most important thing. <laughs> that's it, yeah. It gives the punters <laughs> some hope. All right, listeners, uh, you can find that multi on the Neds app. Thank you, Tom, for joining us again, mate. No, thank you, Ryan. Very good insight. 